What are the main drivers behind your results? In the first half of 2020, IQE has achieved uh, revenue growth of 35%, uh, resulting in a record revenue performance of the first half of £89.9 million. Um, and the key drivers for that have been diversified across our product range, largely fueled by the macro trends of 5G and connected devices. Why did wireless revenues show such strong year-on-year -year growth during the first half of 2020? After a difficult year in 2019, where our wireless revenues were really impacted by changes in global markets and a level of destocking of uh, legacy components, we've seen really strong growth in 2020 for new 5G components uh, for handset launches this year. Um, and that's meant that we've diversified our customer set as well, um, with good growth with our US chip customers, uh, but also in Taiwan. And we've also seen growth in infrastructure markets as well as the handset market. And this is really fueled by uh, deployment of 5G base stations, predominantly in Asia to start with. Uh, but here are sales of a material called GAN on silicon carbide, uh, which is the material of choice for 5G um, in the antenna elements of the base stations. We've seen great growth in that material as those deployments have commenced in 2020. What factors underpinned the continued photonics growth? In photonics, we've seen strong growth as well, so over 20% uh, growth in photonics year on year. Um, and there we've seen continued strength in 3D sensing. Um, so within the existing supply chain there that remains the majority of the market again in 2020, uh, we're experiencing content gain uh, with the expected appearance of 3D sensing on what's called the world facing camera. Um, and here, the, the advent of augmented reality is really exciting. And we think that that will be a driver for you know, much broader adoption of 3D sensing across a number of handsets and manufacturers. We've also seen strength in infrared for military markets as well. Um, so overall, a very diversified growth in photonics too. Capital expenditure was only 1.1 million during the first half of 2020. Can you please comment on this and what will your capital investment profile look like going forwards? Capital expenditure of just 1.1 million was significantly lower than uh, previous years and that's pretty much natural at the end of our, uh, the infrastructure phase of our capacity expansion that we completed in 2019. So, there we saw the construction of our mega foundry in Newport um, expanded onto a, an extra floor in our Taiwan facility um, and also expanded our infrastructure for 5G capabilities um, in Massachusetts. Um, and so that gives us a lot of capacity for, um, you know, for future growth and meant that you know, we naturally didn't need to spend as much on capital in 2020. And obviously within the uncertainty of the, the current um, you know, global situation that we've been operating in this year, um, it's been sensible to keep spend to, to minimum level. So that really represents what we needed to spend for end of life investment. Our capital expenditure will be much more linear with the revenue opportunity. So we'll be purchasing more tools to go into those facilities in line with the revenue opportunity that we see. Management's guidance for 2020 implies that the second half performance will not be as good as that for the first half, although in normal years this is typically the other way round. Can you please put some more colour on this? 2020 is certainly not a typical year for many reasons. Um, we're operating in what clearly is um, a very uncertain and unprecedented environment. Um, despite that, IQE has traded very well. Um, we've encountered no disruption and have been able to manage our business continuity very effectively during this period and actually have been able to maintain very um, consistent levels of production which don't match the seasonality profile that you might have seen in, in previous years where there have been ups and downs and a, a bit of a spike in Q4. So you've got more, um, more consistency in the underlying production. Um, and as we look forward, we continue to see um, you know, strong underlying demand, but we continue to see that the environment will be uncertain as well. And I think there are you know, several global factors at play there um, that may give us um, a bit of a softer Q4 than the run rate we've seen um, to date. 
However, we have good um, run rate visibility into October. Um, and it's really about that latter part of Q4 that we don't have visibility on yet. Um, and we do have positivity um, from our customer set who guide um, in contrast to IQE on a quarterly basis because they're US customers, whereas we're looking towards the end of the year. Hence, we're being more cautious. Uh, we need to get closer to understand exactly how the, the year will play out at, at the back end. It's quite possible that the second half could be as strong as the first. Um, but what we're saying is we can certainly see that we'll do at least 165 million. What trends are you seeing that will most affect performance in 2021? In 2021, we think the 5G trend will continue. Um, there's no doubt that 5G is coming and it's going to transform the way that we all live and work. Uh, what we've seen from the strong performance from IQE in the first half of 2020 is that when the 5G deployment gathers pace, IQE is exposed to all of the right parts in terms of our product positioning and our supply chain relationships that we have. So we're very confident that the company is very well positioned to um, uh, capitalize on this multi-year mega replacement cycle that is 5G. However, we also think that the, the path to that might not necessarily be linear uh, because of the uncertainties in the global environment. So it's hard to predict growth rates right now, but what we do know is that 5G is coming and, and IQE's technology will really be at the heart of it.